Hi guys and welcome to episode 17 of Kent Walks. Normally I record the intro en route and in the case of this episode I did but it was such a windy day and I, whatever I tried to do I could not cut the wind out. Even afterwards I tried using software to clean up the audio and it was having none of it. So unfortunately I'm going to need to re-record the intro and just do it here. So um, this week I'm exploring the place where the first retailer of printed books, William Caxton, may have been born and its neighbouring village where Joyce Culpepper, mother, and mother of Catherine Howard, was born. Enjoy. From where you park the car on the A26, head south and then leave it on the little cobbled street towards the church. After admiring the tower, Head left along the alley to turn left to join Court Lane. Turn right up the road and at a crossroads turn left. Where the road bends left, maintain direction on a footpath that brings you out at the A26 by Hadlow Manor Hotel. Head straight opposite through the gate and between the buildings of Goose Green Farm. Head north across the field and at a fork turn left into Hazel Wood which will eventually bring you out by the pub at West Peckham. Turn half left and head to the opposite corner of the green where you'll find another footpath heading west. Join the road westwards for a very short period and when it turns left head right on a footpath that passes to the north of Oxenhoath. At a cross paths turn left heading south to eventually arrive at Carpenter's Lane. Follow the lane south and where it meets Steers Place, turn left heading east, and when the road bends left, pick up a footpath on the right, which will bring you back to the A26, back to the start. Hadlow Folly, built in 1840 by an eccentric Walter Barton May, purportedly to spy on his wife, believing her to be unfaithful and fraternising with a local farmer. The 170 foot tall Gothic Tower is one of the largest of its kind in Britain and once formed part of Hadlow Castle, sadly demolished in 1951 for building materials. The tower itself was saved from destruction when portrait painter Bernard Hailstone, commissioned to paint Her Majesty the Queen and Winston Churchill, bought this wacky construction, which was later converted into a home. Today it's a luxurious holiday rental property, so if you fancy somewhere oddly exquisite to stay, check out the website.
At an undisclosed location, apparently on a hill above West Peckham, once stood Diamond's Cottage. In the late 18th century, it was owned by a chap known locally as Jack Diamond. Jack had just moved to the village and claimed he was retiring here after a successful career in London as a merchant. Jack was no merchant. Jack was a highwayman. He was called Jack Diamond simply because he always wore diamond cufflinks and rings, no doubt spoils from his unlawful activities. One morning, after a rather ferocious storm developed and a bolt of lightning hurtled down from furious skies, Jack's cottage taking the full force from the blast. Jack was instantly killed and the cottage practically destroyed. Neighbours ran to assist and discovered hordes of loot stolen from innocent travellers. The day of the storm? Friday the 13th and apparently Jack's ghost can be seen every Friday 13th walking towards the village along with a terrifying scream. Just over to our left is former manor house Ox and Hoth, birthplace of Joyce Culpepper. It was built by Sir John Culpepper, a knight of Henry V, in 1372 during the reign of Edward III. It was a 73 acre royal park for oxen and deer and has been the home of no less than 11 knights of the realm. Today it's a family run retreat and described as the perfect environment for self-discovery, profound learning and spiritual development. Well we're nearly back at the start, I thoroughly enjoyed it as usual, it's been a really nice tranquil walk out in beautiful countryside, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.